Good morning, Cypress Village. Hope everybody's doing well. Welcome to Cypress Village Virtual Coffee Chat. Today is the last day of April, April 30th, and I hope everybody's having a great day so far. Looking forward to the weekend. We have uh, quite a bit to talk about today. We're going to kick it off with Dave Green, who is going to give some updates regarding all the projects and uh, other items going on regarding plant operations throughout Cypress Village. We're going to follow that up with Nick La Liberty. He's got some information both on the tech front and also the security and um, wildlife animal front as well. So uh, Nick will cover those areas and I think there's some parking um, disruptions that may happen that he'll, he'll talk about as well relative to painting the, the parking lot stripes. Um, Katie Amador in Community Life Services will provide some of the highlights from uh, Community Life Services. Katie is back in her permanent role now that Laurel Mundell's back. Uh, but Katie, again, I've been thanking you quite a bit. Uh, just one last thanks for all you did in Laurel's absence, but we are very happy to have Laurel back as well, who will be making a guest appearance here today. So uh, hang in there today. Don't leave your coffee chat uh, uh, episode today. So um, followed by that, we're going to kick it off with Dining Services. Mr. Brian Berger will provide the burger of the week. I have not gotten any insight as to what that is this week, so uh, stay tuned for that. And last but not least, we are going to introduce one of our new members to the Cypress Village family. His name is Stephen Lee, and he is our new HR manager. And uh, you'll learn a little bit about Stephen uh, today as well. He's a great guy. He's been with us uh, right around two weeks now, and uh, he's already, already demonstrating some great qualities that we'd love to have here at Cypress Village. We'll finish it off with me with some COVID statistics here at Cypress Village. And also, I want to delve into the uh, memo that went out last week regarding the reopening plans in Phase 3A. I've had a lot of calls and emails, uh, death threats, just kidding, um, just kidding. Uh, but a lot of residents and families that are a little unhappy that we didn't take a further step forward in reopening. And I think the biggest concern that uh, I've heard in the last few days is how that how we are now requiring a COVID test for visitors and family members that are coming into the building. And I'll explain all of that in great detail a little bit uh, later in the episode. So, and I'll cap it off with some happy birthdays around the village. So enjoy today's episode. Thank you. All right, good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. Uh, just a couple updates. Obviously, everybody in the C and part of the D tower is wondering about the hot water. Right now, we are consistently giving about 95 to 100 degree water. Uh, you have to let it run for about 10 minutes in your apartment because it cools down in the pipes going through the building. But 10 minutes to 15, you should get the hottest water that we were able to provide right now. We're still waiting for the company to come back and put a third hot water tank up in that C7 room to give us more volume to help with more showers. Um, it does help to shower at off times, um, but then again, if everybody is showering at off times, then you know it will be the same situation. So we're trying to do our best to get this done. Uh, the permanent solution is slated right now for mid-May, mid somewhere close to the 15. We're trying to push it up a little bit earlier as fast as we can get it. Uh, the new solution will have redundancy, so coming to the future, we will not have this problem again. The C and D building should never have, not have hot water again. So that's one of the reasons why it's taking so long. Nobody wants to hear it, but COVID has caused the problems with the manufacturing of the new units, and we're doing our best to just push it along. Uh, another announcement I like to make, we're going to be painting and re fixing up the entrance to the D second floor off the parking garage. So it will be closed Tuesday and Wednesday next week and reopen on Thursday. We'll be painting the inside of the foyer up there on Thursday. So just watch for the wet paint signs, but we'll still be able to use the entrance at that time. Uh, we have a couple other projects going out still with the koi pond and the boathouse is getting some new flowers 
as well as we'll be touching up the floor and all the other items out there that need to be restained. Uh, we got a new fence out here in front of the uh, towers that will be getting stained as well. Though I wouldn't mind hearing from some people if you like the natural color, if you would like it stained the same color. Because I think it looks pretty good the way it is now. I'm just afraid it won't last. Anyway, welcome for welcoming, welcoming the suggestions. So give me a call. Have a great weekend. Thanks. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope everyone's having a wonderful Friday. I do have a few things to touch on today. Uh, the first being scams. We've seen a recent uptick in activity to do with that. So I wanted to kind of go over what you want to look for, um, how you want to prevent it. The first being, which is the most popular apparently now, is asking for gift cards. If you get an email from, say, another resident, and they're asking for e like uh, gift cards from Amazon, iTunes, Microsoft, wherever, always question that. Um, that is the number one scam going on right now, and it is, it is rampant. So it's, it's hitting everybody. They'll get your email, and then they'll start sending out emails to every single one of your contacts. So make sure to change your passwords regularly. Um, and, and another one is, you know, family members that call you and say, listen, don't call my mom or my dad. And, you know, this could be your nephew or something like that. And they're asking for money because they're in some sort of financial trouble. 10 times out of 10, that's not legit. So be on the lookout. Always be, you know, suspicious when you, when, when you feel that in your gut. And call me. Um, you can call me anytime. My number is 904-223-6220. You can email me. Uh, my, my email's in the directory and I can look over it with you. Um, I can also help go through your computer, make sure nothing's been, you know, no one's been in it or anything like that. Um, and just be suspicious of, of emails like that. Um, the other thing I wanted to go over is a exciting new technology that the IT committee has been looking into for quite a while now called VirtuSense. What this is, it's a fall detection uh, camera, if you will. Uh, it doesn't record, but it, you know, it measures your movements uh, thermally, and it can tell whether or not you know, someone's getting up that's not supposed to be getting up, uh, and it can prevent falls that way. It can also um, tell you, hey, listen, Mr. And Mrs. Johnson, you know, don't, don't get up, wait for Nurse Jane to come see you. And we're gonna deploy these mainly over in the healthcare center. Uh, we might deploy a couple in the memory care, but we've done our fair research and this lowers falls uh, by like 80%. So we're very excited about that. We've been researching it for quite some time now. I uh, should be getting the contract any day we'll sign it and start implementing that technology. So the IT committee is really uh, firing on all cylinders here. We're constantly thinking about things to do. Uh, we got the IN2L tablets coming up for independent living. So be on the lookout for some literature on that. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about and discuss the different programs you can get into because there is a few stages of them. The other thing I want to talk about is we are currently in the process of restriping the parking lot. Uh, so there may be some parking inconsistencies, there may be some things coned off, please don't remove the cones. Uh, we're doing this to beautify the community. So make sure that, um, that, that you're just not, not hindering the process. We want to get this done as quick as possible. Uh, we will notify you if for some reason there's an inconvenience and we have to move you. We'll, we'll give you a call, security will. Uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about is the animal situation in the community. We have a lot of raccoons, we have a lot of, you know, wildlife. The number one nuisance is the feral cats. Um, we do know that there are a few residents feeding them. We ask that you please not do that. We are currently looking into situations where we're going to trap them, spay or neuter them, and return them. So we're trying to find a company to do that at this point. But please, please do not feed the wildlife because it only causes problems. These cats get into fights, they keep, you know, mating, and then there's going to be a rampant surge of feral cats around the, uh, the village, and we all know that we don't want to see that. So I hope everyone has a great weekend, and um, please call me if you need me, uh, and please send me anything you think is a scam. So have a great weekend. Bye-bye.
Good morning, Cypress Village, and happy Friday. Hope you all are having a wonderful week. My name is Katie Amador. I'm the Director of Community Life Services, and I have a few activities updates for you all this week. The first is that we are changing our department email from resident programs at cypressvillageretirement.com to CLS at cypressvillageretirement.com. Why are we changing it, you ask? Just for some uniformity, you know, with LCS, our name change from resident programs to community life services. So there's been some confusion. We're gonna go ahead and make the switch to the new email address name. However, if for some reason you still email the old address, we will receive those emails um, and be able to process whatever request or questions that you have. Um, and then we'll also just send along a reminder to use the new email moving forward. So again, moving forward for activities related questions, sign up inquiries, um, or anything else activities related, you can email CLS at cypressvillageretirement.com. My next update is regarding the May activities calendar and newsletter. Um, we are running a little bit late on those. However, they will be distributed by the end of the day today, Friday, April 30th. So please keep an eye out for those. Submit any sign-up requests that you have. Um, know any details regarding the events that we have coming up in May. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us directly via email or by giving us a call. And my last update is that on a weekly basis moving forward, we are going to resume the distribution of the Community Life Services weekly update or the Activities weekly update. Those will, moving forward, go out on Fridays and list any changes, additions, or updates to the schedule for the upcoming week. Um, and it will also include a little brochure that lists all of the virtual offerings that will be uh, provided through CVTV, which is channel 266 or 267. So keep an eye out for that as well on Fridays and be sure to update your calendars with any changes that may be listed. Um, but otherwise, I hope you all are having a great week. If you've not already done so, please stop by the business office and give Laurel a big welcome back. We're all so very excited to have her back. Um, we missed her so much and she's just the angel of Cypress Village. Uh, so be sure to welcome Laurel back and have a great weekend. Hi everyone, it is Tiffany from Community Life Services. I'm just going to show you our office. You may know this as the bank, the Wells Fargo Bank. However, it is now the new Community Life Services office. It's still located in the train lobby, just where the old bank used to be. Uh, we're not finished uh, moving in just yet, but once it is finished, we will give you all an in-depth tour of our new space. Thank you. Good morning, Cypress Village residents. Happy Friday. Uh, I have a few announcements for you today. First of all, uh, we are, will be sending out the survey uh, regarding the new 4600 menu this Friday. So please look for that. It'll come via text, email, and there'll also be some printed copies at the concierge desk. But we prefer the um, email or texted uh, version of the surveys. They're automatically calculated uh, by the computer, so it just makes tracking it, everything much more easier. So. Look out for those, fill those out, and get them back. I ask that you complete them by Monday. That way I have time to review everything and get back with the dining committee to go over the results of the survey and decide where we will go next with the menu. Also, we are currently in phase 3A, which means that in the dining areas, we are allowing up to four households to dine together with a maximum of four residents per table. And in the Loon's Nest Bar and Grill, uh, you can come and drink without having so those are the main updates for phase 3A. And those are all the updates I have for today. So have a good morning, enjoy your sticky bun, and we'll see you around the village. Hey, hey good morning and welcome to the Burger of the Week. This week we have our Cypress Steakhouse Burger. It is lettuce, tomato, onion on a bun, Kaiser roll, all beef patty with A1 sauce, Blue cheese crumbles and applewood smoked bacon. It'd be great company with fries. And so enjoy the burger of the week. Thank you.
Hello everyone, this is Tyler from the Loon's Nest. I uh, just wanted to touch base on the store -to door program. There are a couple changes that we've made. We will be adding a $4 delivery fee for any order under $15. So if you have submitted an order and the order total is $15 or more, and we actually do not have the product to fill that order, that is on us, we will still honor the order and there will be no delivery fee. Um, the reason being is with the increase in diners in the actual dining venues, we want to be able to provide the highest standard of you know, service we can, but we will definitely do our best to get your order filled as fast as possible. Still a 48 hour turnaround. So if you have any questions from here, just give me a call. I hope you all have a great day. Thank you. Hi, hello everyone. Uh, today, um, I would like to introduce the new HR manager. His name is Stephen Lee, and uh, like to get a little bit, like to uh, get him acquainted with everyone around the uh, village. So welcome, Stephen. Uh, good morning, everyone. Now I'm the new HR manager. I have 10 years experience working in assisted living. Um, I pride myself on completing tasks and being here for the residents, which is number one. Through words, my friends were used to describe me, I would say, is caring, dependable, and self-sufficient. Thank you all for everything, and I hope to see you around the community soon. Hello, lovely residents of Cypress Village. I am back. I'm very thankful to be back, and I have received many cards and many emails from, from you, and I greatly appreciate all of the kind of thoughts, words, and prayers as I've been on maternity leave, and um, I'm 100% recovered, so I don't want anybody to be concerned about anything. We had quite a fun time with bringing little Jack into the world, but he is perfectly healthy. My oldest, Henry, at home was perfectly healthy the entire time. So um, I'm very grateful to all of you for your thoughts and prayers as I was at home and recovering. And many, many thanks to Katie Amador for holding down the fort and taking care of Ty for me. Um, one fun announcement now that I'm back from maternity leave. I am now in charge of the concierge team at the front desk. Nick has many, many responsibilities, and he will still be in charge of security, IT, transportation, but concierge team, it makes sense that they're under the communication wing of the community. So in light of my responsibilities, we're going to be working together now. So if you have any issues, concerns, questions, or if you want to tell my team how great they're doing, feel free to let me know. I will be the ones overseeing them from now on, and I'm really looking forward to that opportunity. Well, it's so good to see many of your faces. I've run into quite a few people this week, and I'm happy to see the rest of you now from Coffee Chat. Have a great weekend, everyone. I'm so glad to be back. All right, I'm back, and I uh, hope you're enjoying today's episode. Thus far, I'm going to give a quick update on COVID statistics here at Cypress Village. Right now at Cypress Village, we are still very, very proud to report that we have no confirmed cases of residents or staff on campus. So that is great news. We did take a little bit of a step backwards in regards to testing. Uh, we were on testing monthly for approximately two weeks, but unfortunately, the Duval County positivity rates have gone above 5% again, which now put us back to weekly, which is very arduous for the, for the staff to handle. It's just those that are off have to come in, and those that do other jobs here at Cypress Village have to take a full entire day each week to, uh, to perform testing. So um, great news on that front. I do want to mention, like I said, in Duval County, the confirmed cases have continued to spike upwards over the last few weeks, which did give me hesitation to continue with the um, reopening plans that we had. You know, ideally, I would have liked to have been 100% reopened at this point. However, based on the positivity rates within Duval County and also what's going on in some other states within the United States uh, with outbreaks and variants, I thought that it would be the smart decision to just 
you know, stay a little bit on the uh, cautious side and see what happens over the next uh, uh, coming weeks. I'm saying anywhere from two to four weeks we'll stay in this current 3A phase. And as I mentioned, uh, as we kicked off this week's episode, you know, I had a lot of pushback regarding 3A. And the, the major points that residents and family members uh, were voicing to me were that they have to be tested um, even if they have a vaccination card. So I want to give everybody a little bit of understanding on why I made that decision. And as everybody knows, the biggest responsibility I have here in my job and my position is to make sure we keep everybody safe. So what happened a couple weeks ago, you probably remember that Governor DeSantis for the nursing home side of our community or our campus and throughout the state of Florida opened visitation up to anybody, any age, regardless of vaccination or negative COVID test. Well, that spooked us. That was not something we wanted to hear as providers. So the day after that, the state being the governor, as well as the Agency for Healthcare Administration, reiterated that we can mandate a negative COVID test for visitors coming in to visit their pa our patients or our residents in the healthcare center. However, if we did mandate that, we had to be the provider of the test. We were not allowed to inconvenience family members to go outside to get a test from Regency or their physician or other areas, Walgreens, wherever that may be. So we had invested in purchasing boxes of the antigen rapid tests here at Cypress Village. And I'm glad we did. The reason being is in the first week that we implemented those visitation um, standards at the healthcare center, we had a couple come in, a husband and wife come in to visit their loved one. They graciously volunteered to show us their vaccination cards, which we were glad to see. They were fully immunized, fully vaccinated. We told them that we had to perform the rapid test. They were fine with it because they were here and it was not an inconvenience to them. Both of them, the couple that was visiting, both of them popped positive on the rapid test. So even though they were vaccinated, they were both either carrying or had the virus in their system, which for us was a big win because those could have been two people coming into our most vulnerable area of the community and of the campus and infected their loved ones potentially and their loved ones potentially infecting our staff, and then that, that spread or that outbreak could occur. Two days after that, a single uh, individual came in, same thing, provided their vaccination card, was expecting to go in. We stopped them. We did a rapid test on that individual as well. That individual popped. So we had three fully vaccinated visitors that were going to enter our building that had no symptoms whatsoever, that could have potentially infected their loved ones, that could have potentially infected our staff, and so on and so forth. So as of that point, that was the impetus of me deciding in independent living in the main building that we were going to do the same thing. I know it sounds like a lot, and it's an inconvenience. It's draconian. It's, you know, all the bad things that we can think of. But I can tell you this. If it keeps our residents safe and healthy and prevents a death or a hospitalization, we're doing it. So that was my decision. I want to demonstrate, uh, I'm going to have Laurel video this, how easy this test is and how quickly this test can be performed. I want to make one other note. There are family members and visitors that are very adverse to taking a test that's going to be reported to the Department of Health or other governmental agency because of their records being held in some database. Um, I've got a solution for that as well. If that's something you do not want, we will provide you the test that was taken, you know, assuming it's negative, and you can destroy the test and we will not report it. If that makes those visitors or family members happier, we're more than happy to do that. That's not a problem this test that you're going to do, they don't have to be performed every time your daughter or your son or your family or your friends come and visit. Every two weeks, one test will be sufficient. So while I've got everybody here, and Laurel's going to put out, I think, some clarification and some 
areas that we may have misled the population and our residents on the community update this week, but I wanted to do it per this coffee chat to make sure that we explain the process and everybody's on board. So this right here is a Abbott. Abbott Labs is the manufacturer of these COVID tests. They're an antigen test. These tests can be performed very simply. You take, it's very similar to a pregnancy test if you have ever gone through one of those six drops swab in the nose. You don't have to go all the way up the nose. You just put the swab around the edges on both sides for about 10 seconds each. You stick the swab in the little hole here. Peel off the sticker. Close it. I put it under here. You can't see it yet, but within the next five minutes, you're going to see a red line come up here. One line means you're negative, two lines means you're positive. If you're positive, it typically will show the result very quickly. If you're negative, it's gonna show that pretty quickly too, but you're not 100% sure you're negative for at least five minutes. So that is the extent of the test. And what we do if you're not adverse to the test being recorded with the Department of Health, simply put your name on it and a cell phone number and a date of birth and what happens is the Department of Health will send you a text just like this one that you can keep as a record in your phone to enter Cypress Village for the next 14 days. Or you can just keep a picture of your negative result and it's done. I think one area that was confusing or upsetting to residents was the fact that in the correspondence we put out, it said that you could wait up to two hours. What that should have said was, if there is a lot of people waiting to have the test, there may be a delay. But I can tell you based on, since we've rolled this out, people have waited no more than five or 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes max, to get a result. At that point, your loved one, your family member, your friend who's coming to visit with you knows very, I would say very concretely or con confidently that they don't have the virus. CDC, as well as other health experts have said, even if you're fully vaccinated, you can contract the virus and you can spread the virus. The good thing is, if you've been vaccinated and you get the virus, your symptoms are very, very light, which means you're probably not gonna have to be hospitalized or have you know, major complications, but you don't know you have it and you can pass it. So that is why I made the decision to do what we did. We're going to stay in this, you know, in this uh, mode for at least, like I said, two to four weeks, see what happens. If we start seeing the positive trends we want to see with herd immunity and other um, positive trends relative to the vaccinations, then we will pull this step back. But please, please understand why I came up with the decision. Let's embrace it. Let's understand that it can really prevent you know, problems. We've been doing this for 15 months and we have been almost meticulous with our results. I don't wanna go into the 15th month and have a hiccup over something we can perform so easily. So please accept it, please be understanding, and uh, I thank everybody for uh, the support and the patience. All right, we've got one birthday boy out there today in Cypress Village. His name is Rick Corum. Rick, happy birthday, buddy. Hope you have a great birthday today. Reach out and say hi, hi, hi to Rick. Um, on the second, we have Douglas Grace. And on the third, we've got Nancy Thompson. Happy birthday to you two. On the fourth, we've got Janet Liberty. On the fifth, we've got Miss Mary Schwieber. Mary, happy birthday. 
On the fifth, we've also got Denise Togger and Miss Faye Austin and Patricia West. Patty, happy birthday to you. Miss Austin, happy birthday. Denise and Mary, wow, a lot of birthdays on the fifth. On the seventh, we've got four birthdays as well. We've got Miss Sue DeKemper, Mr. Frank Cuff, uh, Dute Smith, and Jackie Newman. Happy birthday to all you ladies and Mr. Cuff. Happy birthday to you. So with that, uh, we're going to call it a wrap. It's another episode of Friday's Virtual Coffee Chat. I hope everybody thought it was informative and uh, enjoy your weekend. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. I'm good to go. Mm -hmm. How do I look? All right. Mm, all right. <laughs> Four out of ten. <laughs> Ooh, that's a wrap. This is so fitting. Laurel's back. <laughs> Celebration. I think Zumba. Okay. I can do this. <laughs> Hi, Jean. <laughs> Which means. Uh, we have your back ah, crap. Uh, beverages can be consumed without using a straw. <laughs> Anyone notice? <laughs> oh, good catch. Right, start over. Take two, take two. <laughs>